Okay, so I'm waiting for Jane and Laura to come back. And while I'm waiting, I might as well do a little Juniper Ridge video here. Um, so this is the Wild Plum Campground in Sierra City, California. And when I was, uh, oh, I don't know, like 23, 24 years old, I came up here in the in the late fall. It's very cold. There's no other people camping here. And uh, it wasn't quite this cold, but <laughs> this is an early snowstorm we're getting here. It's, uh, what, November 4th or something. But I came up here with my girlfriend and some other friends, and I was 24, and I was reading lots of Gary Snyder, and just getting into the world of wild plants. I'd backpacked a lot as a kid and camped and done all that stuff, but I never, ever paid attention to the plants. Look at that. We've got white fur there. Beautiful white fur, snow on it. And um, I had my little Pacific Tree Finder book with me, which is a classic. And if you live on the West Coast and you don't have that and you're interested in plants, you are a fool because it's the best little book for learning about wonderful trees like these. Do you know how I know that this is a white fir and not a Douglas fir or a California red fir? Well, you can tell it's a true fir because the needles are flat. See that? Like on a Douglas fir. Here, let me back up a little bit so it's clear on the camera. On a Douglas fir, the needles circle all the way around like a like a pipe cleaner. On a true fir, the needles generally go out in more of a flat-ish pattern. Um, and when I say true fir, I mean that these are true firs are all in like the same clan, the same genus. Douglas fir is often its own special little thing called Pseudosuga. And there are only two members of that whole clan in the whole world, Douglas fir and Big Cone Douglas fir in Southern California. And they're not, they're not firs. They're, they don't belong to this uh, group of trees in terms of evolution. Uh, Douglas firs have small cones that fall off. These trees have cones that stay on them. Can we see any cones? Well, no, we can't see anything with this camera, but... Anyways, if it had cones, <laughs> it'd be sitting up here like a like a big baseball on top of the on top of the tree and facing up. And they keep their cones like the cones don't fall off. They um, the seeds fall off, but the cones themselves stay on. So, anyways, back to my boring story. Um, I had my little Pacific tree finder with me, and um, we came up here and I identified my first plant ever, which was dun dun dun. Incense cedar! Where's incense cedar? Let's see here. Where's incense cedar? Little Juniper Ridge um, history here for for the two people that care, which is me and uh, I guess me. <laughs> um, so here's incense cedar. And oh, look how different those leaves look than the leaves we were just looking at, right? They're not individual needles, no. They're jointed leaves, right? So we have, uh, oh, these cameras are so cruddy, but uh, here, let's see if I can get it to focus right on that area there. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. God, it's not so cruddy. Uh, it's here for the iPhone 4S. Um, yeah, look at that. Jointed leaves, okay? So what other kind of trees have these kind of leaves? Um, junipers, cypress, Cedar. Those, those trees are all in the same clan. They're all in the Cupressaceae family. They're all evolutionarily related. Man, they smell different from each other. It's just amazing. Um, we camped out here. It was like October 20th. No one else was here. Got really cold at nighttime. Had my guitar and we were singing Velvet Underground sound, songs. And um, I remember walking up to this tree. And, God, I even remember what tree it is. We could walk down to it, but that would be super boring. Um, oh, and I smelled it, and I was like, wow, what tree is that? God, it's so unique smelling. It's just amazing how different this smells than western red cedar or Alaskan yellow cedar or Port Orford cedar, the other 
three cedars that grow in the west coast. Um, and I looked it up in my little tree finder, and it was the first thing I ever identified. It was incense cedar, and I was so happy and so excited. And then later, when I started Juniper Ridge, and I was selling at the Berkeley Farmer's Market, I came up to this very campground. Shh, don't tell the park rangers I did this, but I came up to this very campground here and harvested here. <laughs> That's a no-no, because you're not supposed to do that. But I think there's like a statute of limitations on stuff like that, and that was at least, you know, what was that, like 13 years ago or 12 years ago or something. And I, I, got, I stuffed a backpack full of this cedar, and um, just for the, for the record, even though it's illegal to do that, I always do ethical harvesting. So, you know, you're looking at a tree like this, and I would harvest the bottom boughs off of it. It keeps growing up. The tree's not affected. It's completely legit. Also, this stuff on the side of the road gets trimmed by the um, state parks anyways because it sticks out in the road. Um, yeah, so I harvested the, uh, cedar and took it back and made a soap out of it. It was one of my first three original soaps. I had California Bay Laurel, Coastal Sage with the Big Sur Sages, and Sierra Nevada Glacier Bar, which included this, um, cedar. And back in those days, I used real, um, glacial rock in that soap, uh, so much that that my customers complained because they had abrasive problems with it in the shower. <laughs> they were like, they were like, you gotta, you gotta calm down with that, uh, that rocky stuff because it's really out of control. So I did calm down with it. I, I ended up taking it out because there was no way to put it in there in small amounts that, um, that uh, was conducive to a smooth bath experience or, or shower experience. And that was that. That was my, you know, that was the origins of Juniper Ridge, and it was all here at the Wild Plum Campground. And um, I love this area. I've been coming back here for, oh gosh, you know, I don't know, almost 20 years now. Yeah, about 20 years I've been coming to, the, to this area. And um, I just love it. It's like this little, it's not wilderness, it's all national forest. And it's very boutique and small. And the lake's basin is, um, it's like a miniature version of the High Sierra. And the High Sierra is great. I love, I love the High Sierra. It's hard to get to, you know, it's it's deep, big wilderness, and it really takes, you know, three, four, week, 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 week long, three, four day or week long trips to get back up into those mountains. And God, when you do, it's the best thing in the world. But if you don't have that kind of time, wow, what a wonderful thing. Like you've got this miniature version of this wilderness here. You've got glacial lakes that you can hike to. You have small peaks that you can hike to the top to. And I'm up here with my little girl right now. And it's just, um, it's just such a marvelous little area. It just has everything that the High Sierra has, but on a small, low elevation scale. And uh, have I mentioned that I love this area yet? I guess I have. Um, anyways, that's my story for today, and I'm checking out. Thanks.